artificial intelligence is changing the job market creating new types of jobs while automating routine tasks why with 20 to 50 million new jobs are uh, expected by 2030 ai is creating and enhancing jobs in healthcare pharmaceuticals and other industries hello everyone welcome to analytics inside podcast where we talk about the ever evolving technology space and i'm your host priya dialani while some industries may experience significant job displacement the economy is expected to benefit from increased productivity and output as ai continues to evolve understanding its impact on employment and the economy is very crucial how can organizations leverage ai yet ensure consistent workforce development Driti Prasanna Mahanta is a vice president and business head at Teamly's degree apprenticeship who will help us understand uh, about workforce development in the evolving age of AI and give more answers around it. Hi Driti how are you doing? Hi Priya I'm good how are you? Uh, I'm doing good too thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you uh, with us on a podcast and uh, hope we uh, explore more angles uh, about AI and workforce. Absolutely. Thank you so much for take uh, for this particular discussion. I think it will be a fruitful discussion. Likewise. So um I think a lot of our listeners um I mean uh, all over uh, people all over the world uh, might know about Teamly's and uh, Teamly's degree apprenticeship. But it would be great if you can give some brief uh, intro about Teamly's and its specialization. Sure. I'm sure uh, people know that Teamly is one of the India's largest employer. We are one of the India's largest staffing company. We are almost 24 years old company and we started our journey of particular skilling ecosystem in 2013 when we set up our own skill university in partnership with Government of Gujarat. So in 2013 in India we came up with something called a very new concept of skill university now we have more than 20 25 skill university in India but we are the pioneer in terms of setting up a skill university the reason for skilling uh, setting up a skill university is that India is definitely a education based market than a skill based market as compared to other neighboring uh, countries or you say Europe and US also where a uh, skill is more uh dominant as compared to the formal education if i talk about the division which i had uh, degree apprenticeship with teamlees we we call ourselves as teamlees degree apprenticeship business uh we have been in business for last 10 years uh, we have enrolled more than 10 lakh youth uh in 10 years time out of which 7 lakh people have been placed after completion of their apprenticeship program uh we have more than 600 employers working with us around 1100 job roles spread across pan india different state different geographies where we have put people in different skilling programs in different job roles uh, to get skill the skilling program varies from 6 months to 36 months depending on what kind of job role they are by and large i think we have able to move the needle what uh, india look for i think uh, today india has a skill deficit which is increasing uh, year by year and i think with uh, all new technologies coming in the skill deficit for certain sectors is going to again be going to rise more and i feel that is where uh, the skilling is required uh, through apprenticeship program by which it, uh, people can get skill for specific domain which can be from 6 months as i told you to even 36 months if somebody join for 36 months he can be a graduate apprentice after completing uh, 36 months if he is a short term certification program then he will be an apprentice with certifications so our certification we we give a uh, certification in uh, around 87 uh, different job roles uh, degree in around 22 job roles and we also have lot of other skilling uh, programs which we call it work based learning program which are more for upskilling and reskilling uh, with new technology coming in i think even the people who are skilled working in a specific domain they look for skilling and upskilling that is where we also chip in and uh, provide lot of uh, different kind of skilling uh, certifications and uh, diplomas so that is what we do as far as my job role is concerned i look after the complete uh, business uh, in terms of this degree apprenticeship uh, which is from the complete life cycle management uh, from supply chain creation to demand creation to uh, managing the complete life cycle to the certifications and also helping the apprentices to get a job in the industry uh, wherever they are working uh, i think as i told you more than 75% of people get a job in the same company where they have done their apprenticeship the rest people move to different industries which are similar in nature but uh, depending on the different geographies uh, they get uh, 
absorb also. So in a nutshell, we can say almost 100% people get absorbed once they complete their apprenticeship program, which varies from six months to 36 months. Great, quite impressive. And um, it seems, uh, I mean, you mentioned uh, it rightly that apprenticeship programs will uh, help in more upskilling of uh, upskilling of employees. And definitely we're going to talk more about it in detail. But uh, moving ahead, I think um, contrary to uh, unemployment fears, AI is projected to act as a catalyst for job creation. The development and maintenance of AI systems uh, requires a skilled workforce with high demand for AI specialists and data scientists. Now, AI is not merely a replacement, but a collaborator, uh, which in turn enhances human capabilities across various fields. And of course, we have been hearing about um, uh, these uh, debates, whether uh, AI will displace job or it will augment jobs. So I think that's a continued debate uh, till date. So I uh, would like to understand what are your views on the impact of AI on workforce development? I think uh, every decade you find something new coming in in terms of technology, right? Where people get scared initially in terms of their whether jobs will get cut and then how the complete industry is going to figure out in terms of like uh, how the because of new technology coming in you, you there'll be a job cut because there's no skill and all those things i think did this happen every decade i uh, we all have seen this but with ai coming in i think there's a lot of huge potential for not only specific to uh, certain job roles, I think for India as a country, I think there's a huge scope for India to become a skill capital for AI uh, uh, specialists. I think uh, today India can actually create a huge workforce which have skill uh, in terms of AI and uh, which can be actually can be uh, relocated or can be taken care of by different industries across the globe itself. So if I talk about AI specific to the job creation today uh, the demand for ai is almost uh, 6 lakhs 29000 there's a skill deficit research which we did initially a couple of months back um, which actually we realized that the skill deficit in india for ai is almost uh, 6 lakh 29000 approximately and this this skill deficit is going to increase year by year that is where uh, i think there's a demand but we don't have skill manpower to take care of the demand for AI, forget about job cut, right? There's a demand. So if there's a demand, do we have the enough skill manpower? If we don't have, how to create the skill manpower? That is where I think uh, we as an organization or we as a university come into picture where we uh, actually create those kind of uh, skilling programs which can actually create the required skill which is required uh, for an AI professional which can later can move to a formal employment. So I think uh, we, people should not be scared about uh, AI. I think we all have been talking about uh, that uh, with all new changes, there'll be new job roles coming in. Today, even I talk about uh, automotive sector or automobile with EV coming in. It doesn't mean that job cut has been done in certain sectors. I think with those reduction in job cut, there has been an increase in another sector which people need to get skilled. The thing is that you need to keep on evolving yourself in terms of your uh, skilling. If you stop getting skilled, uh, if you stop doing your enhancement of your skill, then definitely you'll move out. Uh, you will not be able to survive and sustain. Similarly with AI also, I feel the same scenario. Uh, there's a huge requirement. We don't have sufficient manpower, sufficient supply of uh, skill manpower in AI, which is required. And if we can provide this, not only the Indian requirement, Indian labor force requirement, but globally, I think we can be a skill capital for AI. Right. I completely agree with you that um, uh, with evolving times, uh, job roles also evolve. So it's very important as to how uh, you are upgrading your skills uh, with evolving times because uh, some job roles might become obsolete, but uh, meanwhile, simultaneously, we'll see new ones emerge as well. You know, for example, uh, manufacturing workers uh, probably need to have new skill sets to operate robotic machines or AI-driven machines uh, rather than taking over, managing more of their manual tasks. So there's a shift in the job roles, definitely. But, you know, I was just uh, going across this um, article in which uh, Apple CEO Tim Cook uh, says that uh, a four-year degree is not necessary for coding. Now, what they found out is that uh, if we can uh, get coding in the early grades and have a progression of difficulty over a tenure of somebody's um, high school years, so by the time you graduate, they're already writing apps uh, that could be put on App Store. 
So as an industry, I think we need to democratize uh, AI by ensuring right tools are in place as well as the right educational and apprenticeship programs are in place. Um, accordingly, we also, um, I mean, organizations also need to develop a culture of innovation where they can accept uh, such um, uh, AI individuals uh, who are skilled enough early in their age and they can get away from creating algorithms only for the algorithm's sake. So, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, how you explain about uh, what are a team lead's apprenticeship programs. Doing. So I wanted to understand what is the role of an apprenticeship program in AI talent. So I think what uh, you, you're talking about is a very common problem in India. As I told you, there is more of an education-based market than a skill-based market. I think today, uh, a lot of things have changed in the last three, four years in terms of India's education system. I'm sure you know about National Education Policy 2020, which talk about skilling as one of the uh, component, which is by default will be there in schools today. Whatever we study, actually not required when you start working or start uh, working in any corporate, you realize, okay, these are obsolete. This has been, this is not required. What is required has never been taught in schools. I think with apprenticeship ecosystem, which is evolving with ministry, minister of skill development and entrepreneurship and minister of education, I think fundamentally what we realize in last four or five years is that uh, it's very important that when somebody go to any school or college, they need to have practical experience of different kind of job roles, different kind of skilling. As you correctly stated, if a guy who is a person who is class eight and he start a, one of his course has a coding, then he don't need to do his four years of B or B tech after completing 12. So how this can be formalized? Because uh, if you don't formalize the this particular thing in India's education system, somewhere there it will be difficult to scale up the numbers or whatever industry is looking for. So I think uh, a national education policy with credit-based framework, I don't know you heard about credit-based framework or not, where 70% is theory, where you learn while you are at a university or a college or a school, and then 30% you go and do real-time work or real-time projects. That is where you will be getting your uh, uh, certifications and diplomas and degrees. I think that is where we uh, need to emphasize it is not only industry who need to uh, take uh, initiative. I think it's more of from the education ecosystem, which is uh, governance and implementation from the government side, which will actually help to create those kind of workforce that you don't need to spend your four years after class 12, then you become, after say 20, 20 through 22, 23 years, you become a skilled man a workforce for the labor market at the age of 10 or at the age of uh, say, 13, 14, when in class 10, you're already a skilled manpower, right? Because you have done your all those codings, all those kind of skills which is required for you to become productive in, during uh, your uh, employment. I think, uh, uh, as you correctly stated, uh, it is very important. We should cut down our uh, longevity in terms of getting skill. But I think if we uh, reverse this particular and put this particular skilling program from school itself, I think that is where uh, uh, it will make a lot of sense. And that is where Team Lease is working. I think today, uh, most of the education reforms or apprenticeship reforms which happen in India, I think Team Lease played a very important role in terms of putting the inputs why and where the changes are required. I think uh, if you see the uh, Apprenticeship Act of 1961 got different amendments. I think 2019 amendment, which was uh, a landmark change in the Apprenticeship Act. And a lot of inputs were taken from Team Leads itself because we work closely with the industry also. When you start working closely with industry, 600 employers, you understand what is the requirement. What is the requirement of an employer in terms of the productive workforce? What kind of skill they look for? What kind of skill they, they think will be required in next two or three years time? That is what a lot of uh, inputs uh, we as an organization or we as a university gives to a lot of stakeholders in government, which actually help them to formulate and make uh, policies simple and effective in terms of creating the productive workforce. I think today, if I talk about we run two to three courses of AI with different companies, short term courses, I think we realized very early that why uh, India need to have certain skilling programs in AI because we see the demand, but we see their skill deficit also. So I think that is where we, we chip in and that is where we actually help industry, education uh, 
stakeholders uh, in terms of bridging the gap, what industry is looking for and how we can formalize this particular scaling program through apprenticeship and through other uh, schemes. There will be a supply of productive workforce in the next one or two years' time. But I feel it's just an initial uh, stage for us. Uh, I think we will just move, but I think uh, we are on the right track. Yeah, um, even I agree with you. And it's very important that... Um... Uh, we think differently and address the crucial problems uh, that we are facing today. And um, I think if you face them head on with more innovative uh, thinking, uh, the problems won't seem uh, bigger as we imagined. And um, we need to take this thinking further and not only make this about people entering uh, into any particular industry, uh, but it's very important to have robust uh, plans in place to retain our workforce for the future. And that one plan could be uh, upskilling and upskilling can, could be done through apprenticeship programs that you explain and how Team Base has been doing that and heading in that direction. But um, I think uh, it's not just like a one-time activity. Uh, when we're talking about skill development, it's more of an, uh, a continuous learning um, that an organization has to put in those, those, those efforts. It's not just, okay, you know, you're engaged in one program yeah. and you're done and you're upskilling. You know, like we discussed earlier that uh, everything is evolving around us. Every day we have a new technology, anything new skill set to learn. So uh, what are some initiatives uh, taken by team leads uh, to ensure and foster continuous uh, learning in a digital age? So uh, Priya, I agree with you. I think that is where I was talking about that it cannot, as you correctly said, it cannot be one of the activities or checklists which uh, as an organization or as an education body or stakeholders need to do. That is where, so I tell you what we do. We we have tied up with 22 universities, 150 colleges we have. And all these 22 universities we have are different programs which are not basically on-campus kind of a program. And all these are on-campus uh, on-site kind of a, a model where people not only do their theory part in different job roles or courses, they also go to industry. So I have more than 600 employers working with us. So when I talk about these 22 universities, 22 universities actually have courses which are industry uh, related courses is are not specific like BCom, BA or a BSc kind of a courses which will not uh, make them employable after three years. With this kind of courses which are industry relevant and the industry has created jointly these courses with us. So actually we have moved the industry to the campus to create these courses and these courses when they anybody can enroll in these courses they not only go to campus to do the theory, they also go to the these organizations to the real-time work. So when you talk about formalizing this particular process, if you link it with education which, uh, through a regulated body, uh, this becomes a continuous process. Every year, there will be an admission. Every year, people will be coming and enrolling themselves in these particular courses. And that is how the complete supply chain of these people will be created. It is not isolation uh, kind of a program where we tie up with, uh, with a particular establishment and we do certain kind of a skilling program in AI or other co uh, evolving technologies. So we actually created those courses with all the regulations under UGC, under NCVT, whether you know NCVT, they're the one of the stakeholders of creating courses. And these courses have been created after the inputs given by the industry, what they look for in the next one year, two year, three years time. It is not only AI, there are a lot of things happening in manufacturing also, which is related to AI. There are a lot of things, even retail, uh, I think, uh, has a huge requirement for AI. Right. So I think this kind of uh, the initiative which we have taken as a company is really going to make a lot of change. I think it's not only us, there are a lot of other stakeholders also who are creating the same kind of ecosystem for the new technologies which is evolving and which is going to create a lot of jobs uh, in not only in India, across the globe, uh, maybe virtually also. So I think uh, that is where these 22 universities, 150 colleges, uh, more than 87 courses, which are all embedded courses, not regular courses like uh, only theory, no practical, no real-time experience. I think uh, all these courses are like a real-time experiential courses where they go, they learn, and whatever they learn, that also become part of their credit. We run a credit-based program. We don't run any normal program. So every hour they spend in a particular organization doing a real-time work, they get a credit. If I take, a, take give an example, right? Uh, for example, uh, you need if you're looking for a credit card, 
you need to have your credit right you need to have a civil or something that is how this, this complete thing is that if you're looking for a degree or a diploma you need to have this amount of credit like 100 credits 80 credits to get a degree or a diploma and how you get it is that you do some portion of this in the college and rest you do uh, when you are working at a client place and all these establishment today are paying a lot of good stipend to these people right the stipend varies from 14000 to 18000 even to 25000 also Today, I work with some large uh, multinational uh, banks who are actually having uh, apprentices uh, whom they want to skill for six months to one year. And they've been paying a stipend, you will not believe, in the range of 80 to 1 lakh rupees. So the traditional thought process of apprenticeship has gone now. I think uh, more and more industries today are looking for this kind of a model to create their own supply chain. And I think uh, the universities also realize that if they also want to evolve with these changes, they also need to move a, to a different direction in terms of creating courses which are more industry aligned, which is going to give the industry more productive workforce as compared to traditional uh, BCom, BA or BSc kind of a degree or a diploma. Right. Very well said, Driti. And um, I think... Um when we're talking about artificial intelligence and uh, workforce development, it's definitely a very tricky and sensitive area. Uh, but I think with right set of tools and strategies, uh, organizations can uh, deal with the situation uh, pretty efficiently and effectively and ensure that they are retaining their workforce as well. Um, upskilling through apprenticeship is definitely one of the ways and uh, where uh, even, you know, the employees are growing in terms of their skill sets and eventually they're prepared to uh, deal and adapt to the uh, changing times uh, that probably... Uh, emerging technologies not just artificial intelligence but now we have generative ai and um, probably next year we might have something else so that might keep them um, updated and ensure that uh, they are in a position where they can accept and learn uh, more of these technologies and include them in their skill set as well uh, but um, i think uh, it's very important for uh, company leaders and lnd managers uh, to effectively learn and strategically prepare the workforce also for their challenge it's again like you know i mentioned it's not again like a very simple task or uh, you know you just put up a strategy and um, and it's done um, i think most important is that you're starting off on the right foot and it is very critical so um, I want to understand from you, what are some ways or practices of skill development that probably you would recommend to organizations? I think what we, we also do with a lot of uh, large establishments, large organizations, which is huge uh, man, uh, workforce and uh, every year they get a lot of freshers coming from campuses. We do something called a skill tech kind of assessment, which we, uh, where we uh, tell the companies or explain the companies uh, what kind of skill set they'll be requiring, what kind of what kind of people they need to hire. I think uh, today, uh, most of the hirings are leading to non-productivity is because they don't, uh, organizations have different tools to hire uh, people, but ultimately they also do a lot of wrong hirings, around 40% of people whom they hire from campuses or people who are freshers coming out of colleges. I think 40% people are still uh, doesn't fit into what organizations are looking for or what the students or, the, or those uh, freshers are looking in terms of career progression. Uh, so I think we what we have done with some large organizations, we have uh, done a complete skill mapping, not only for a specific uh, time frame. We say we'll do a skill mapping and analysis in terms of telling you how the productivity will improve with what kind of hiring you need to do, what kind of skills you are requiring to make your team productive. Uh, if I talk about l and I think uh, l and uh, team, uh, any organization today, l and is very lean. Uh, I think most of the l and teams today are outsourced. So I think that is where we also uh, run something called managed training services which is not only managing the training part of it and be part of the productivity enhancement of this kids coming out of college and universities and freshers coming out uh, or from uh, different institutes also. So I think we start with a skill gap analysis for these large organizations, like telling them this is what you should be doing, this is what you have done, which is not effective with all our 24 years of experience in skilling and employment. And then uh, that is how we tell them these are the uh, job roles where you need to have skill manpower. We see there's shortage of skill manpower. What do you, what the definition of productivity is a productivity is a definition of three months outcome or six months or one year outcome. 
Uh, we also try to analyze their coming, what are projects they are lined up for next one or two years time, what kind of people they'll be looking for. Are those people available in the industry where they need to uh, get these people at a higher cost or they start building those people one year before or two years before they launch the product, get the, the particular project implemented. I think what we uh, have been very successfully able to do with a lot of organizations is that we have been able to create those skill manpower before the project starts so that they don't need to uh, go and hunt for people at a higher cost, which lead to uh, what you call it, uh, increase in their manpower cost. Uh, and we have seen that when you hire people from colleges, kill them for a specific time frame with all those courses which I was talking about, the retention and the joining rates are higher as compared to a normal degree or as compared to a little higher with a higher cost from competition. There's always, you can say, cost attached to those kind of a, a structure. Whereas if you say, Riti, I am uh, there's a project for me. I need 100 people for this particular technology. Can you help me in creating these people? Uh, my project is going to start in this day. Can you help me? Uh, a reverse kind of a mechanism where I go back, figure out which other skills uh, is required, how I can build a skill uh, while they are in campus. And then uh, once they're out, we're ready for the organizations to deploy them in different projects. So that is what we, we do. I think uh, the fundamentally we do a lot of skill gap analysis, then we figure out what is required. So as I told you previously, also we take a complete life cycle, right? From hiring to uh, skilling to even part of productivity enhancement, even for certifications and exit. And even uh, what, what we have done is that we also do a lot of policy making in terms of like, if I say apprentice, right? The apprentice, when you join, a lot of HR people are, or LED people are pretty confused what to do with this kind of people who are not an employee, not a contextual employee, but an apprentice. So we actually uh, create those policies where they can fit in. So uh, it's more of a consulting job, which we have been doing with some large organization. And we are going to replicate th those case studies with a lot of other organizations which will definitely going to help not only that particular company, I think the complete ecosystem of India's uh, workforce or you can say labor market. Yeah, I think that completely uh, makes sense and uh, it's an evolving landscape and it requires more of a product, uh, proactive um, adaptation and where I think continuous learning and um, not just AI, but we also have to ensure responsible AI de deployment. And uh, it requires also collaborative effort from um, government and business and educational institutions, uh, which can help workforce uh, uh, be ready and thrive in an age of artificial intelligence, which is again uh, growing continuously where we are seeing new advancements each day. So, um, yeah, continuous learning is definitely important. So, I, I tell you, scaling is not a two-minute Maggie or something, right? It, it needs time, mm -hmm. right? I think yeah. uh, if any organization feel that they'll uh, put this people in a particular class for 15, 20 days and then they'll get skill or they'll become productive, no. It's a, it's a journey, right? Every organization uh, evolve. The, the people who are skilled, they need to again get reskilled or, or upskill. I think that if our l &D team or the leaders in, in the HR fraternity understand this particular thing, I think then uh, they will not have this particular issue with skill def deficit in their companies. It is it, not a one day one day or two minutes kind of a thought process. It needs a lot of uh, patience, a lot of investments are required and uh, a lot of planning is also required on this. I agree with you. I think that's very important. Uh, but having said that, what do you or what are some trends that you uh, predict in terms of the future of workforce development and upskilling of AI talent? So I think, uh, as I told you, there almost uh, see there's a huge requirement. If I talk about skill, so how we gauge the requirement is through the skill deficit only, right? So as I told you that uh, there will be around one million uh, uh, demand which will be in this particular space of AI by 2026. So I think uh, it's very interesting space for youth to start. Uh, getting skill in this particular space. And I, I'm sure if they has get skill with the initial intervention from the industry, uh, because it cannot be only, again, as I told you, cannot be only theory, theory. I think the intervention and the collaboration from the industry, uh, I think uh, there's a huge requirement. And uh, that shows that there's a possibility of 65% uh, uh, of this uh, 
requirement will be in formal form and employment today we all talk about gig, gig economy also but out of this 1 million uh, uh, what we we can forecast is a 65 percent of this particular will be formal employment so there's a huge requirement for this particular people in this particular space but uh, how soon they can they, they realize this and start uh, getting up and start uh, working on uh, getting skill that that is how uh, we'll make a lot of change for individual uh, job seeker perspective today uh, if i talk about uh, ai i think it is not specific to only to a uh, specific industry today ai is and will be required across all the industries which are evolving today uh, we talk about the large 15 industries where we see a growth in india all these 15 industry will require ai professionals today from in constructions people will need ai People will need a lot of AI uh, professions in, uh, what do you say, in retail, in logistics. If I tell someone that AI professions will require in constructions, people may not believe they will not able to correlate, but we have started working on that particular space also. So I think there's a huge requirement and how we channelize the requirement uh, so that uh, formal employment is created, uh, which I, I can foresee is almost 65%. Any new technology coming in, this kind of... Uh, the requirement will be always be there, but how we capitalize this kind of requirement uh, with skill manpower, that is something where larger discussion is required by the, by the government, industry, and then a lot, lot of partners like us who need to chip in and uh, get this uh, requirement into a real uh, kind of a scenario, which can create huge job market for India. As I told you, again, I'm telling you, India can be a, a skill capital for AI professionals for the rest of the globe. Right. I think, yes, uh, when we're talking about any new emerging technology, initially there's a lot of chaos, but uh, so it's also more about a uh, learning opportunity that organizations need to capitalize on and uh, grow and ensure that the workforce is also growing. And of course, it's pretty impossible uh, to know all the ways that AI will affect the workplace in the future. Uh, but upskilling and reskilling initiatives can arm your employees with powerful and flexible skill sets that, are, that can help them adapt to the inevitable technological changes to come. When you go, see, we have seen this, right? If we go and talk about upskilling, reskilling, that person mm. is only 20%. The adaptability is 20%, 20, 25%. But when yeah. you look at fresh skilling of people in this kind of technology, the adaptation is much more. It's almost mm. 80, 85%. So somewhere, I think uh, the workforce which is there, uh, mm. the change, I think they are still reluctant with uh, the upskilling and reskilling thought process in India. I think because our labor market is very dynamic, it's very unorganized. 98% labor market is unorganized, right? But uh, yeah. when you say, if you see uh, other countries, labor market is very organized. That is where they actually realize this, this 20, 25, 28% is much higher as compared to the university part of it. So I think uh, a lot of uh, thought process required. It cannot say that only our l and team will create some courses and then going to upskill their existing employees. But when you're talking about upskilling the existing employees, there's a lot of career progression which need to be chipped in with this particular upskilling uh, programs, right? If you don't give a career progression that after you become skilled in this particular technology, this is a career progression for you, which I have seen in many large organizations. They talk about upskilling and reskilling, but they don't talk about with this upskilling and reskilling can, what will be their future progression? In the same company. So I think that is where we yeah. also need to figure out that when you talk about any upskilling, reskilling, it is for short term or long term because employees look for long term. Right. If you're looking for long term, yeah. then you create a progression plan. Otherwise, it will mm-hmm. be very difficult for the existing workforce to adapt and become productive with all those upskilling, reskilling programs. Yeah, it's, it's eventually it boils down to creating a or promoting a more lifelong of learning um, throughout the workforce and rather than just um, like you mentioned, short-term um, upskilling and reskilling programs. So um, I think that's very important. And um, consequently, um, your organization should also be well-equipped in terms of how they want to poster this. Um, it's important because it's uh, it's important to thrive in the era of AI and which can help them stay ahead uh, of their competitors. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dhriti. It was a pleasure having you uh, with us on our podcast. And I think we explored a very different angle as to how equipping your uh, workforce with the evolving trends and uh, skill sets is so important and the role of team leads here. So thank you so much for your time and effort. Thank you so much, Priya. Thanks. Uh, my only request to your listeners is that just go ahead and 
type of AI jobs in any of the job board, yourself will realize that the kind of opportunities they have. And the uh, only thing they need to do is they need to get skilled quickly. Right. So I think listeners, you already know what's the next step after listening to this podcast. Uh, but meanwhile, you can view all our previous podcasts uh, and our upcoming new podcasts on Spotify and other leading platforms. Thank you so much.